Hi, it is I, RG, with a slightly less scuffed version of explaining how facilities work. Um, utilizing my facility. So, uh, where to start? So, hello, Ultra. Um, gonna talk to me. It's good. Basically, uh, starting from the beginning, you have the foundations, which is a necessity for building facilities on top. They require gravel. Also see the new building menu, which have all these tabs. You find them here. Foundations. This is the 2x2 two two foundation. Um, pretty much all facilities require a 2x2 two two foundation. Can just barely be on it. Some of them are just slightly larger. And uh, gravel is something you acquire by refining coal in a refinery, a traditional refinery, so over here. And coal is a really simple resource to get, just need a hammer, and it refines 5 to 1. So, once you have your foundations, you will have to use traditional BMATs to build the first two structures you're going to need, which is this power plant. It's a diesel power plant that can have the petrol power plant upgrade. The petrol power plant upgrade is uh, more efficient. I think it's 2.4% more efficient, which is very nice. Uh, it takes BMATs to build, and it takes uh, construction materials to upgrade to the petrol power plant. Once you have power, you can start thinking about building the next structure you're going to need, which is this structure. It's a materials factory, the basic version. It takes scrap, or salvage, makes it into construction materials. It can be upgraded with these four upgrades. And you can pause the video if you want to read what they do. I'll highlight the one that is more important to understand than the rest. So, the smelter is a really good upgrade for getting more efficient construction material production. Basically, you get three in the same time as you get one, but it requires something called coke. The other upgrade that's important is the forge. The forge makes assembly materials that you need to make more advanced vehicles. So, we would like to upgrade our materials factory to have a smelter so we can get construction materials more effectively. So, coke is something you get from this, which is a coal refinery. It takes 200 coal, and it gives you 180 coke. Very nice. This also has a series of upgrades. You can once again pause the video if you want to read what these specifically do or take. The important one that we have here is the coke furnace, because the coke furnace allows us to get sulfur from coal. So slightly less coke, but we get 15 sulfur, which is very nice, especially for our facility, and I'll get into that in a bit. So now we can make construction materials at a much faster pace, which is very nice. Once we have enough of those, we'll upgrade our power production to take petrol. Then we want to start actually utilizing our facility for something. And for that, we need these materials, assembly materials 1 and 2. Assembly materials 1 and 2 are used for making the first small gauge train, which is this one over here. It's a cute little minecart. It goes choo choo. And it's frozen because it's snowing. <laughs> Never mind. Anyway, you make that in this, which is a light vehicle assembly station. It requires 2 megawatts of power. And base production, you can make these vehicles. This is the little train. And the train carts for it. You can also modify the base trucks here. Our specific one has been upgraded to be a rocket factory. And here you can make both of the half-track variants. And also the normal wasp nest rocket push gun. Which is very cool. So, you have your train. Your train allows you to more easily access stockpiles of different items. And you can also use it to stack non-stackable items like large items. The assembly materials are large items, along with processed constructed materials, which is the next thing we're going to look at. You make that in this facility, which is the Metalworks factory. Here, as a base, you make processed construction materials, which is the next tier of construction materials. It requires construction materials as well as components. And you can also use these to make pipes, 
Pipes allow you to transfer liquids automatically, which is very nice. The upgrade that we have on ours is the Blast Furnace, which allows us to make assembly materials for three and also more efficiently make construction material like the process construction materials. So I don't know why they would say four and three, not three and four. Some of the things in this update are a little wacky, but it works as intended. So that's just uh, one of those ah game is unplayable moments where it's a it's a little detail that would have just been a little nice to have. <laughs> but I'm not complaining too much. As you can see, assembly materials four needs heavy oil. Heavy oil is something you get by upgrading an oil refinery uh, to make it. It's not something we currently have at our facility, but the oil refinery is a very simple structure that you built. You put in raw oil in one end and out the other comes petrol and you can upgrade it to make heavy oil, which you use for assembly materials for. It also takes sulfur for making assembly materials three. These are slightly cheaper as well because you only need construction materials for these. I actually needed the process construction materials for the other. The other two upgrades you can make to this is the recycler. This is very cool because it's basically infinite components as you can use it to make what is now known as broken components, which you get from an empty component field that has a component miner on it, which has the upgrade for making the broken components. And uh, they go 30 brokens to 20 uh, normal. So that's basically 30 broken components to the equivalent of one refined material. Uh, you also use these for making steel beams, which you use for anti-tank traps and some basic construction. The engineering station is the last tier of construction uh, or construction processed material where you get steel processed materials. And that's what you use for making battle tanks and super heavy tanks and stuff like that. It's also something I'm going to show you too much of because we don't make it at our facility. We just want to make uh, rocket trucks. But that is the last tier and what you will need to make battle tanks and so on. Yeah. The last little thing we have at our facility that I'd like to show you. I went on the back side. Brilliant is this. This is the munitions factory. Ammunition factory does what it says. Make specialized ammunition here. Uh, we of course have the rocket factory because we are making rocket vehicles. You can both make both factions rockets, which is, uh, I guess, you can't, uh, depending on what faction you are, you can't shoot the other faction's rocket, so that's kind of whack. But if you capture one, at least you can make more ammo for it. The other upgrade you can get is uh, specialized ammo. Uh, notably, the 300 mil is made this way. You can make 150, 120, and uh, the new anti-tank uh, calibers are also made here. And of course, most of this require heavy explosive material. This is, by the way, the flame ammo as well. It's what you make here in 250. Yeah, I think I have covered most of the actual processing. Here's just some uh, more nice to know things about the facility. These are resource transfer stations, which is basically uh, buffer storage for gathering resources, and you can store them in here. And then you can access it with your small gauge rail track, which is way faster than using a truck. And over here, we also of course, have other storage, which is a material transfer station, and it can have all the materials you can put here. It's a bit annoying that it can't have some of the more basic materials, but you can have everything that you can use or produce in your facility. Moving on, you'll notice that we have some cranes and some large tanks over here. This is our petrol storage facility. You can of course make liquid transfer stations, just like you can make materials and resources. These can hold a an insane amount of fluids uh, or 100 cans. It's uh, half as efficient at carrying petrol because it can hold it as items and petrol is only 50 liters per can whereas diesel is 100 so it can have twice as much diesel. Don't ask me why, that's just how the devs want it. 
Then we also have these, which are, so this is basically an integrated part of your pipeline system. You can't pull the petrol out of these, so they're a nice buffer to have, uh, but not necessary at all. It's way more compact to use these. Uh, they can have, like, the fuel density of these tanks are much higher than uh, these little ones. But the nice thing is that they're an integrated part. Like, if you are in any way concerned about people stealing fuel from you, storing them in this uh, means that they'll never be able to pull it out of your system. And it's just, essentially it's safe storage. Yeah, pipes are pipes are super simple and very intuitive. Uh, especially like even the underground ones, you just pop it down where you want to start it. Uh, let me see if I can actually. <laughs> Our uh, facility is pretty dense, but yeah, you can just pop down the start one where you want it and the end one. You can even like if you want it, you could have them turn the same direction. It doesn't really care about that. Very flexible. I can go a pretty good distance as well. So that is super nice. Um, I think that is all. Uh, there's going to be another video where it's uh, explained a bit more, I don't know, uh, theoretically and with some nice graphics, maybe. Uh, this is mainly just as a remedy to this one guy who's been complaining that my voice setup has been really bad. And uh, I have to agree, <laughs> but I can't notice it. So uh, deep apologies for being inadequate at doing YouTube things. I hope this will help you a little bit.